Hello everyone, welcome back to you. Today we are going to talk about erectile dysfunction and other male sexual dysfunction. This is a, a sensitive topic and a lot of men are suffering from it. My name is Uftina Majaristi, I'm a medical student. Stay tuned. <music> sexual dysfunction is common in men and increase with age. There are several kinds of male sexual dysfunction including decreased libido, erectile dysfunction, and ejaculatory disorders. Ejaculatory disorders include premature ejaculation, delayed ejaculation, and ejaculation. Decreased libido is estimated to affect approximately 5 to 15 percent of men. It increases with age and it frequently accompanies other sexual disorders. Erectile dysfunction was reported by 80 percent of men Age between 50 to 59 years, and by 37% of men aged between 70 and 79 years. Premature ejaculation is considered to be the most common ejaculatory disorder, with an estimated overall prevalence of 20 to 30 percent. Starting on erectile dysfunction, there are a number of risk factors and predictors of erectile dysfunction. In addition to age, the best predictors of erectile dysfunction are cardiovascular disease, diabetes mellitus, hypertension, obesity, dyslipidemia, smoking, and medication use. Erectile dysfunction and cardiovascular disease share many risk factors, and their pathophysiology is mediated through endothelial dysfunction. Cardiovascular disease and its risk factors increase the risk of late erectile dysfunction. On the other hand, erectile dysfunction may be an early warning sign of future cardiovascular events. Raw libido has been associated with raw testosterone, stress, relationship issues, depression, and systemic disease. And other causes of low libido include medication use, alcohol, depression, recreational drug, and other sexual dysfunction. Raw libido and erectile dysfunction are sometimes due to the same problem, such as depression and hypogonadism. In addition to the development of erectile dysfunction is associated with an increased risk of depression. Premature ejaculation is also referred to as rapid or early ejaculation. Other disorders of ejaculatory function include spectrum of disorder in men ranging from retrograde ejaculation to delayed ejaculation to a complete inability to ejaculate or an ejaculation and anorgasmia. Any medical disease, drug, surgical procedure that interfere with either central, including spinal and supraspinal control of ejaculation and autonomic innervation to the seminal tract, including sympathetic innervation to the seminal vesicle, prostatic ureter, and bladder neck, or sensory innervation to the anatomical structure involved in ejaculatory process can result in delayed ejaculation, and ejaculation, and anorgasmia. Additional factors thought to be associated with ejaculatory dysfunction include low testosterone concentration, low urinary tract symptoms, and common use drugs such as alpha brokers like tamsoicin and sidoicin and antidepressant. So, how do you evaluate male with erectile dysfunction? Important information in patient history with erectile dysfunction include determination of the rapidity of the onset, evaluation of erectile severity, and assessment of risk factors of erectile dysfunction. Erectile dysfunction that develops suddenly is typical due to performance anxiety. Aside from psychogenic cause, only radical prostatectomy or other gentle tract trauma can cause sudden loss of male sexual dysfunction. In comparison, men suffering from erectile dysfunction or any other cause of erectile function that fail sporadically first, then more consistently. In men presenting with a complaint of inability to develop erection, the presence or absence of spontaneous erection is an important clue to diagnosis. Most men experience spontaneous erection during rapid eye movement sleep and often wake up with an erection. Complete loss of nocturnal erection is present in men with neurological or vascular diseases. In addition to basic physical exam, there should be an assessment of secondary sexual characteristics 
including body hair, facial hair, and body habitats. Examination of femoral and peripheral parts as a kudu to presence of vascular impotence, a breast exam to look for evidence of gynecomastia, and the measurement of testicular volume. Appropriate laboratory tests for men with sexual dysfunction include fasting glucose, glycated hemoglobin, complete blood count, compressive metabolic profile to assess liver and kidney function, lipid profile, serum thyroid stimulating hormone, and serum testosterone. Electrical dysfunction and cardiovascular share many factors and their pathophysiology can be caused by endothelial dysfunction. The underlying vascular disease is cause of erectile dysfunction in many men. In addition, men who present with erectile dysfunction are at high risk for subsequent development of cardiovascular event. Patients with erectile dysfunction without an obvious cause, like pelvic trauma, and who have no symptom of coronary or other vascular disease, should be screened for cardiovascular disease prior to the initiation of therapy or for sexual dysfunction. So how do we treat men with sexual dysfunction. Therapy of men with sexual dysfunction is aimed at improving libido, addressing the two vital sexual functions, the capacity to acquire and sustain pain erection, and treating premature ejaculation. Optimal treatment varies depending on the factors that have reduced libido or caused erectile or ejaculatory dysfunction. For men with erectile dysfunction, the initial step include identifying the underlying etiology, including drugs such as antidepressant or antihypertensive agent that may be causing or contributing to the erectile dysfunction. Identifying and treating cardiovascular risk factors such as smoking, obesity, hypertension, dyslipidemia, as both lifestyle measures and pharmacotherapy for risk reduction may be effective for prevention and treatment of erectile dysfunction. For medication, we recommend the initial use of phosphodiesterase 5 inhibitors because of their efficacy, easy to use, and favorable side effects. Examples are sildenafil, vedanafil, tadanafil, and avanafil. Those drugs appear to be effectively but the data field has long duration of action. Current practice guidelines suggest that the choice of phosphodiesterase 5 inhibitors should be based upon the patient preference, include cost, ease of use, and adverse effect. Some group of experts suggest that men also can choose a different option of the initial therapy after a careful counseling and a shared decision making. Phosphodiesterase 5 inhibitors are contraindicated in men taking nitrate. Alpha adrenergic antagonists, which are commonly used for the treatment of benign prostatic hyperplasia, may cause symptomatic hypertension when taken in combination with phosphodiesterase 5 inhibitors. This drug include terazosine, doxazosine, tamsoicine, alfosine, and cyrodoicine. If the clinician and the patient choose to use alpha brokers with phosphodiesterase 5 inhibitors, tamsoicine, sidoicine are a better choice than daxosine or tezosin. And when the combination is going to be used, phosphodiesterase inhibitors should be initiated at the lowest possible dose in a patient on stable alpha, tele, alpha blocker therapy. In patients already taking an optimal dose of phosphodiesterase 5 inhibitors, alpha blocker therapy should be initiated at the lowest possible dose. Other therapy that has been shown to be effective include penile self injectable drugs like intrauretra, alprostadine, and vacuum devices. We suggest choosing among options based on patient preference. We also suggest that men start with vacuum devices. Research suggests that surgical implantation of penile prostatases be reserved for men who can use or who have not responded to less invasive therapy. We recommend testosterone replacement therapy in only in men with documented hypogonadism. Research also suggests selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors as the first line therapy and chromipramine as the second line therapy with men with premature ejaculation. So, thanks for watching. That's all on updated information on male erectile dysfunction and other sexual dysfunction. Please like, comment, and subscribe.
See you next time.